Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Tracker for a force of friction investigation. First things first, you actually need Tracker. So you need to go to the Software Center. This is the only place from which you can download things to your school-issued laptops. And you're going to need to search something called Tracker. T-R-A-C-K-E-R. T-R-A-C-K-E-R. This is really slow. I'm not on campus. Um, so I've already downloaded this previously and the icon looks like this. You can also download something called BLC Media Player. It'll take the place of QuickTime. It'll also play any corrupted video files just in case. Make sure when you're recording video, your level and your video needs to be saved as a .mov or a .mp4. Be very careful. Okay, so once you have Tracker downloaded, again, it can only be downloaded while you're on campus, but you can still use Tracker at home. You need to go to the search bar and go to snipping tool, S-N-I-P-P-I-N-G. Here we go. Right click this and go to pin to task bar. The snipping tool is great. It allows you to take screenshots of virtually anything. Bam, I took a screenshot right there. And you're going to use this to take pictures of your graphs that you make in Tracker. Also make sure you have this Word document downloaded, the Force of Friction Investigation. Part one we do in class, you, you'll draw and you'll calculate by hand. And then part two is where you actually use Tracker. And this part gets submitted to turnitin.com. So make sure you have this Force of Friction Investigation Word document downloaded to your computer. Make sure you have Tracker downloaded. VLC optional downloaded. Make sure you have the snipping tool pinned to your uh, taskbar and make sure you have the video downloaded, the video you shot in class. Hopefully you set the frame rate, or at least it's something constant. Um, cell phones have a tendency to use a variable frame rate. I was able to use my Android to take video uh, using 60 frames per second. So I'm going to start Tracker. If it asks you to um, restart for Zuggle, you need to do that. Diagnostics, sometimes video doesn't play because you need to update your Zuggle. Mine is updated. Always click to relaunch now just in case um, your Zuggle is, uh, is not up to date. Zuggle is what Tracker uses to play files, to play video. Now, most likely you've downloaded your uh, video from, um, from your email. And so yours, your video will be in the downloads. If it doesn't show up, you didn't save it as a .mov or a .mp4. Mine is in my Google Drive, so I'm going to pull up my video. I've saved it with a really convenient title as well. Let me see, IB Physics. This is Cycle 1, but really this is going to get pushed into Cycle 2, Friction Beta, .mp4. Okay, uh, first things first. I shot this at 60 frames per second, held constant, so I'm going to right-click, go to Clip Settings, and notice the frame rate is at 60 per second. That's great, but I need to step the size up. If I do, a st uh, don't go beyond a step size of 5. So with a step size of 1, one click on my point mass moves the frame once. So that's a lot of frames to go through in just a few seconds. So I'm going to up the frame, the step size to 5. That way I'm not clicking, clicking, clicking. Also, okay, so that was right click. Again, clip settings, step size 5, okay. Bottom uh, left black arrow, this one right here. You need to slide this forward just until the object is in motion. And notice my video. The video I shot, I'm, I'm level. My Even though I'm shooting this by myself, my camera doesn't move. I can see my objects very clearly. I'll be tracking. We will be tracking both the block. I put a piece of green tape on here, but for your labs, I think I'm going to use a piece of black tape just so it's easier to see. I'm also going to put a piece of black tape right here or you on one of the masses. That way it's easier for you to track. Um, notice I have a backpack down here that was to catch this falling hanging mass. I'm going to slide this right hand video forward just until just before it crashes into my backpack. You want to stop tracking before any sort of jerk motion happens, before impulse acts or a change in force acts on the uh, block or the hanging mass because that's going to mess up what we're doing. I just want to plot or track the object as it's moving with a constant acceleration. No jerk, no impulse. So I, I move now with, uh, 
between these two black arrows is where I'm going to track. And I moved the upper white arrow back to meet the lower black arrow on the left hand side. Now I'm going to go, go to these purple bars. These are my uh, coordinate axes. I'm going to just set them along the base of the um, the ramp and I'll click them off to hide their position. I'm going to go to this just to the left of my axes is this blue coordinate stick. I will go to new calibration stick, not coordinate stick. Yours, I have a newer version of tracker. Yours will probably show up with a blue line. You'll see my blue line in a second, but I'm going to shift click on this end and then shift click on this end. And then for you, your blue line probably was already exposed. And the length of this incline is 0 0.6 meters, 60 centimeters. And this is good because this angle is 25 degrees above the horizontal and it's automatically 24.9 degrees just by looking from end to end. So I'm in a good spot. I'm going to click my calibration stick and hide the visibility. That way I can't see it. Now here comes the tricky part. I'm going to go create point mass. I'm going to end up doing this twice. Once for the block, once for the hanging mass. I hold down shift and I click and what I'm trying to do is make sure I click the exact same position each time on the green tape that's pretty hard to see and I need to minimize random error so I try to make sure that my hands are careful and steady and I'm going along the track not moving the, the clearer the video is the better it is you can see now already my X position versus time it should look the same as my Y position just because and okay that's all the that goes from this point to this point and it's just before my hanging mask crashes into the backpack you can see this nice curve let me change it to the magnitude position magnitude again this curve this looks like a quadratic curve which indicates a linear velocity I'm sorry a linear acceleration so I will do velocity magnitude versus time for this graph looks kind of meh, jinky and that's just because you know my hands aren't steady when I'm tracking also I'm moving a little bit I'll right click this so to change the just so you know to change the y-axis I clicked it I changed it to velocity magnitude I'll right click this uh, graph now and go to analyze this window pops up I go to analyze curve fits are always selected auto fit and you are going to take a screenshot of this part for me so I'll show you I'm going to go to new and I will just take a screenshot of all of this and then inside of my force of friction uh, investigation I'm going to insert the sliding block mass total velocity versus time and I'll just go control V to paste it inside of there I need to see these A and B notice notice this fit equation I'm just going to type this in here this fit equation tells you what the acceleration is so right here the velocity equals this is like a y equals mx plus b type of equation my a is the slope in this case it's 0 0.3589 times t this slope value the slope of a of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration that's the acceleration plus a y intercept of 0 0.09892 Okay, so from the A value that I plugged in, that's my M in, in the equation Y equals MX plus B. That's the slope. That's the velocity for my sliding block. Now let's go look at, oops, I did not mean to do that. Let's go look at the velocity of the hanging mass or the acceleration. I'm going to close this down, come back here, and now I'm going to drag the bars back, the white arrow back to the start, and I'm going to be plotting now a second point mass. So I'm going to go to create again, create point mass, and now point mass B shows up. And same thing, I will hold down shift and I will click, and I'm going to try to click the same spot on my blocks. And notice that the velocity goes down, and that is because this object is accelerating down. And based on my coordinate system, down is the negative direction now right now what you're seeing looks crazy because this is plotting only in the x direction but this object falls in the y direction so if I change it to y position component you can see a very nice smooth quadratic equation or quadratic looking graph 
that is opening in the downward position to indicate this negative uh, negative velocity and a negative acceleration. So I will now go to velocity y component. This looks kind of bad, but let me just right click and analyze. Clearly, I wasn't very careful in how I plotted. I'll go to analyze curve fits, make sure it's selected, and there we go. So I can see that this, the magnitude of this uh, slope is nearly the same as the magnitude of the other slope. So I'll show you. Let me go new, grab this. All of this data needs to be included in the Word document and control paste this in here. And again, the Y value, I'm sorry, this A value is the slope, a slope of an Excel, of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. So this slope is has a magnitude of 2.786. This slope has a magnitude of 0 0.3589. I'm going to have you take the averages of these accelerations. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Hint, hint. Are the accelerations identical? I should say, are the magnitude of the accelerations identical? Why or why not? Hint, was I is there some certain type of error that I may have previously stated in the video that accounts for you know any discrepancies so you are going to do something with the magnitude of the acceleration so just looking at the positive so make this acceleration value positive this one is already positive just based on my coordinate system and I want you to do something to minimize this random error for number three Number four, use the word equation tool. You can insert an equation here using this insert equation, and you can insert fractions, and you can, I want you to play around and get used to using this. Subscripts, different things. So you're going to calculate for the force of friction um, using the most accurate acceleration value. If you watch my other video, you'll know just keep the accelerations positive. We have a coordinate system in Tracker and that's why we have a slight negative. We have a negative acceleration for this part. And then by now for number five, you should be able to solve for the friction coefficient. Again, use the word equation tool and don't forget to insert your symbols like I taught you. The symbol for mu is right there. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. You will submit this part to turnitin.com. Thanks for watching and study well.